covering the week's top tech stories with a slight Linux bias. Hackers are using a severe Windows bug to compromise unpatched servers. One of the most critical Windows vulnerabilities disclosed this year is under active attack by hackers who are trying to backdoor servers that store credentials for every user and administrative account on a network. Researchers gave the vulnerability the name Zero Logon because attacks work by sending a string of zeros in a series of messages that use the Net Logon protocol, which Windows servers rely on for a variety of tasks, including allowing end users to log in to a network. Zero Logon, as the vulnerability has been dubbed, gained widespread attention last month when the firm that discovered it said it could give attackers instant access to Active Directories, which admins use to create, delete, and manage network accounts. Active Directories and the domain controllers they run on are among the most coveted prizes in hacking because, once hijacked, they allow attackers to execute code in Unition on all connected machines. Microsoft patched the security flaw in August. On Friday, Kevin Beaumont, working in his capacity as an independent researcher, said in a blog post that he had detected attacks on the honeypot he uses to keep abreast of attack hack attacks that hackers are using in the wild. When his lure server was unpatched, the attackers were able to use a PowerShell script to successfully change an admin password and backdoor the server. Beaumont said that the attack appeared to be entirely scripted, with all commands being completed within seconds. With that, the attackers installed a backdoor allowing remote administrative access to devices inside his mock network. The attackers also enabled remote desktop. As a result, they would continue to have remote access even if the admin later patches the server. People with no authentication can use the exploit to gain domain administrative credentials as long as the attackers have the ability to establish TCP connections with a vulnerable domain controller. In some cases, attackers may use a separate vulnerability to gain a foothold inside a network and then exploit zero logon to take over the domain controller. I think a good example of a way for these types of scripts to get into networks are out of date computers on the network Yep. And also um, social engineering scams. We hear a lot oh, about, gosh, yes. like, uh, you probably receive these emails that try to trick you into following through with a process of entering a credential or something like that. Uh, the, the risk that we run and, and the sad case that I see as uh, in IT is that sometimes people think, well, I don't need to update that computer because it's in the back room and nobody really uses it. Yep. Or, oh, well, we need this one to still have Windows XP because we have problems with one of our printers if we don't. Uh, we're still seeing a lot of Windows 7 systems, and that is a tragedy. Mm -hmm. If you have a Windows 7 or Windows XP system on your network, just uh, turn it off, get yeah. rid of it. Yep. See, the, the thing is, is with those systems, so Microsoft has what we call EOL or end of life. Uh, has has ended the life of these operating systems. So they've said, you've got to upgrade to Windows 10. Well, I don't want to upgrade to Windows 10. I like my Windows 7. I understand that and I respect that. However, here's the problem. Hackers now are able to exploit these operating systems. Yep. And as they do that, as they find exploits, there's a couple of things that happen. One, they either give away or sell those exploits, or two, they're just, they're released to the public through, whether it's through the dark web or even on GitHub yep. as, as security research. And so now these hackers, if you will, we're gonna call them that, but realistically, in a lot of cases, they're what we call script kitties. Mm -hmm. And these are, um, not even like hackers, yes, but they don't have to have a lot of knowledge because the the exploit is publicly right. known and understood. So if there are exploits that are available for an operating system, what do we expect to happen? We expect the operating system vendor, Microsoft in this case, to patch that exploit, to fix yep. it. And that's the case with Windows 10. Sadly, though. Those that are EOL. It's not the case with an EOL operating system. Sometimes we hear, oh, well, I don't need support. 
Well, Microsoft has ended support. That's what we've heard. Yeah. They've ended support for Windows 7. They've ended support for Windows XP. Oh, but I, I've never had to call support. I can handle it. That's not what they're talking about at all. Right. What they're saying is, is they will not fix the patches, it does, uh, the, the exploits. It doesn't matter how severe they are. It doesn't matter how easy they are to exploit. Yeah. So you have a Windows 7 machine on your network. Well, you are giving entry to one of these hackers who don't even have to be very good at hacking because the exploits are publicly known. Yep. Sometimes they're part of tools. Sometimes they can just yes. download a free tool and they can say, I want to, with one check, exploit Windows 7. And so they get into a Windows 7 box or they've tricked one of your employees, even if they're just somebody in the back working in the warehouse. Mm -hmm. They've tricked somebody into opening a file that now gives them access to the Windows 7 machine, the Windows XP machine, or the machine in the back room. Doesn't yeah. matter. And here we're learning that Microsoft servers now have an exploit that as long as a malicious party can gain access to any computer on the network, they can now get domain administrator access to the entire network. That's now, scary. Now, your Windows 10 machines are no longer safe. That's right. Because you've given them entry to your network as if they're a domain administrator. Oh, see, that's just bad news right there. <laughs> well, it's bad news. Why is ransomware a thing? Yeah. Because what do they do? They now, okay, I've gained access to this network. I'm going to sell on the dark web access to this network. Yep. You see this with, um, with townships and yes. uh, with cities that, was it the original script kitty who did it? No, what? He just, they just want, they want to get in, install their software and get out and then sell access. That's right. Because that's quick money. So why do people do it? For money. Yeah. And that's how they do it. So, um, yeah, you got to kind of keep things up to date. So, the, you know, it's just a quick thought to ponder. Hey, if you've got any obsolete machines on your network, you got to get them off and get your staff trained on cybersecurity practices. Understand what phishing scams are because you know, oh, well, somebody clicked on a link and now their computer's infected, but their computer is on your network. But I was going to get half of that prince's money. <laughs> That's a whole other <laughs> can of worms right there, Jeff. But I mean, I, when it comes to these kind of things, to look at your system and say, oh, I don't want to spend seven, eight hundred bucks for a new computer. I sure. won't worry about updating this one. You'll end up spending more in the long run uh, or in, in the short term. Um, no, in the long run, if you don't have your system patched, because once they get access to everything, you could be down and out. But and I think it, when they have access to everything, I think it's just important to realize that that one entry point becomes access to, to everything. everything. So spend a couple of hundred bucks, get the new computer, <laughs> save yourself. I don't know what it takes. I mean, it's different. It's different for every case, right? Yeah. I had one person today who called and said, "I have a single Windows Seven computer. I don't want to upgrade it because it just works." Oh. So here's here's an explanation. And here, Becca has shared with us a story that simply tells us that all they need is access to that one computer. And now they've got access to all, all computers of your computers. And not in just like a Samba way, not in a, a way that's like friendly and hopefully they don't find any ways into the back doors on those computers. No, they have administrator credentials on your network. So they can do anything. That's right. Anything they want. When I think about my house, I think I've got... You're done. I think I have seven devices, not including phones and tablets and stuff like that that are connected to the network. Mm -hmm. it's like, I don't want them to have access to that. Yeah. I just can't stress enough, though, Jeff. I mean, I think in the terms of businesses, more so oh, than the yeah. home user. But once they're in... They're in. You can't... That, you're done. Yeah. Because you can't now shut down that Windows machine, that Windows 7 machine. No, they're already into everything. So what do you do? Replace everything? Have every single computer wiped? Because you don't know what tools they've installed. That's expensive. Yeah. So don't fall into that.
Anyways, that's a bad exploit. That's a really serious, folks. I hope yeah. we've stressed that enough that you understand that this is a bad one. So yeah. make sure your network administrators are up and up and they understand these things and that you are protected and safe against these kinds of threats. Thanks for watching the Category 5.TV Newsroom. Don't forget to like and subscribe for all your tech news with a slight Linux bias. And if you appreciate what we do, become a patron at patreon.com slash category 5. From the Category 5.TV Newsroom, I'm Becca Ferguson.